Greetings to all the listeners out there. My name is uh, Sushant Sridhar and I am a mechanical engineering student, third year in uh, NIT Warangal. And uh, today we have with us uh, a superstar, superstar of uh, mechanical and civil department. And in fact, uh, you, I'm pretty sure if you're a mechanical engineering or a civil engineering student, you're already familiar with his name. His name is Manas Patnaik and uh, he's truly a superstar. Uh, sir? It's truly an honor to have you today. Thank you, Sushant. Thank you, Sushant. Pleasure. So, uh, uh, actually, you know, I, when I uh, uh, when I when I'm, I'm speaking to Manus Patnaik sir right now, and in fact, it's it's no different from watching his YouTube videos over the past two years because as a viewer, uh, even while watching his YouTube videos, it felt like he was speaking to me. He was communicating to me, and that's how uh, inspiring his videos are. He's an excellent teacher and uh, it feels no different from watching his videos right now because that's how communicative it is. So uh, again, I would like to thank him. And today we are uh, looking forward to having a very effective discussion, uh, a very effective dialogue on uh, many topics. But first, we would like to know about uh, how you've reached where you are, a very influential person on the internet and in the India's engineering world. So. Uh, Sir, could you please tell us uh, your journey so far? How did it all okay. begin and how you've reached where you are? So the journey started back in the year 2012, to be very honest. And uh, I started taking this subject of engineering and drawing. I mean, this is exactly what has made me popular. And it is because of this subject, it, I am where I am today. So I got into this profession of teaching in 2009. And I mean, eventually I was working out things like what do students like now when you teach on a board it's a different perspective but when you teach digitally when you use something something like a project uh, when you use uh, i mean diagrams on screen when you use autocad to teach engineering right. drawing it 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 really mesmerized the students you can zoom in you can zoom out anytime you want i mean the students at the back i mean drawing hall is quite long the students of the pack also they were enjoying and i I experienced it. I mean, you know, uh, when the backbenchers started making drawings, that's when I realized, I mean, there is some kind of impact that I'm able to make on the, on the mindset of students. And I realized, yes, there is a great potential. So again, all of this started, started with simple chalk and a green board when it, there was this transition to using the project and making digital content in the form of PowerPoint presentations, in the form of um, AutoCAD drawings, live drawings. All of these things were making quite a positive impact on the students' mindset. And this suddenly prompted me to go ahead and why not? Why not? Let's let's put up videos on YouTube. Back in the year 2012, I thought about it, but I was very, very hesitant. And let me tell you something. I mean, the the college where I was working and uh, I was uh, initially handing out all my video content to students in their pen drives. They used to bring their pen drives and I told them, Yo, okay, these are the chapters. These are the folders and take it away. Whenever you have a problem, watch these videos. All the problems are solutions are there. You will have no, pro no issues whatsoever. And uh, your learning will never stop. Even when I'm not there, I'm, you are not physically present in a class, you'll still be able to learn. And then back in 2016, I realized instead of doling out all of these things in their pen drives, let's put up the lecture. Let's take this first step. You know, there are things in life. The first step is very important. Like Sushyan, you've written a book and the first book is very, very important. And it's, it's, it's very, very a positive experience for all of us. And I took that first step. I made a video which was partly in Hindi partly in English, I put it up, I started getting comments. And yes, that's exactly how the journey had begun. It was a video on orthographic projection. So some of the students wanted the video to be completely in English. Some of the students wanted the video to be entirely in Hindi, but again, a decision was to be made. I thought engineering is a course which is primarily taught in English throughout the length and breadth of the country, in fact. and in most of the world, you'll see this this engineering discipline being taught thoroughly in English. Okay, except there are certain countries, maybe Russia, maybe Germany, where 
where they use be maybe using their mother tongue or the local language but as far as india goes it's it's got to be english and i took that decision although i'm absolutely comfortable and very well i can communicate all my ideas in both the languages very easily so that's exactly how all of that began thank you that's that's really great actually uh, what you said is 100% correct it's all about the first video or the first book in my case it was the first book it's the huge the biggest hurdle uh, a writer can ever face and once you cross the first hurdle the other books just seem so tiny and easy you can conquer them one after the other and i think that's what happened with you also i believe you made the first video you made the first attempt and things just fell in place after that and secondly one of the main reasons why your content was very helpful influential is because you specialize in a subject uh, engineering graphics and this subject is introduced to all the engineering students in the first year which means even biotech students or chemical students all all kinds of students are uh, forced to learn the subject and many students find it difficult like for example i found biology very difficult i found chemistry very difficult likewise everyone found uh, engineering graphics very difficult and you explained it so very beautifully and that's one of the main reasons why everyone depended on your content on youtube to actually clear exams and get really good scores exactly. and uh, of course we had our lab exams and stuff our college labs were very effective but after a really tiring day of classes we just sit down and watch your videos things just get concrete in mind so uh, i think that's one of the main reasons why uh, i personally enjoyed watching your videos it was truly educational and very helpful you know sushant i mean uh, i posted the first video back in 2016 or 17 i don't even remember i was very immature i did not knew how to speak properly my communication skills were not as good as it is today but again whatever it is how crude it may be you need to take that first step you know that you are going to get better and as the time progresses um all of those things those errors those problems were fine tuned properly okay i'm sure i mean sure this i mean this is the philosophy of life take that first step for everyone if you want to want to be a content creator take that first step upload your first video do it whatever the response may be but do it and your second video is going to be better than the first one this is an iterative process right and also uh, another amazing thing about uh, sir manas patnaik's channel is because you know his, the way he teaches it's not just a lecture but i find more of a performance many of his videos are performances really i remember this is one video i was watching he was using a calculator and he shared uh, i think it took a few seconds from the video to share his experience with the calculator how close the calculator was with him and these are things we can also relate to as engineering students even i have a ca- casio uh, calculator and i've been using it all my life and these are the little things that just makes uh, uh, sir's videos very personal and you can actually connect with them so uh, thank you sir really thanks a lot for uh, this uh, i mean there there is a lot of effort you know in the background there is a lot of effort that you need to put in even when i was teaching physical classes every time that i went into the classroom or into the drawing hall i wanted to make sure that i give my best performance and there are times when you are not able to perform better because you haven't read read it properly right before going right. to the yeah. into the lecture hall you as a teacher i mean this is this is uh, i mean how i feel this is going to be my suggestion to all the teachers or all the aspiring teachers who are watching this video right now that prepare and give yourself some time when i was quite young i mean back in 2009 i graduated and in the year in the same year i actually got a job in an engineering college i rehearsed you won't believe i used to rehearse in front of a mirror you won't believe i was so much hesitant to walk into that classroom I, I, i mean the first time that i walked into a classroom of mechanical engineering students didn't even got a, uh, they thought uh, he must be some student or something something like that i was quite young back then right, right. <laughs> and then you need to explain them that this is your class and you are the authority okay and things got better and once you're familiar with the students want to i mean have conversations with them things obviously get better i mean this is how it works and with experience with experience i mean your skill sets are improved and uh, and as i said going digital was the best thing that happened to me and uh, 
being taught by a bad teacher is also very important in life i mean you you take good things from good teachers i think i have a lot of elements from all the good teachers that i have been taught by i don't know whether you know or not i mean uh, there is this professor called um, amitabh ghosh from id kanpur I, i don't know whether you have heard about him or not there are his lectures in nptel and yes, they're exactly. absolutely fantastic uh, of dynamics of machines and kinematics of machines i saw him and the way he was making those diagrams those reciprocating engines those balancing shafts i was absolutely mesmerized i just wished that i could draw like him on a board and i have watched him so much that even my handwriting has slightly <laughs> become like him i mean this is what happens when you see something happening i mean on a consistent basis you tend to talk like him you tend to draw like him and stuff like these things happen so i've got a lot of elements from all the good teachers and the teacher who used to teach us engineering drawing when i was studying and let me tell you he used to be someone who would say just try to imagine it becomes very difficult for a student to imagine something right especially i mean you have absolutely no idea of engineering drawing okay when you enter your first year in your class 11th and 12th you have absolutely no idea you know physics you know chemistry you know biology what about engineering drawing nothing absolutely okay so it becomes very important for a teacher to make sure that every student is on the same page they are able to visualize the structure they are able to visualize the drawing the way you do and that was one of the biggest challenges for me okay i hope i have been able to uh address that challenge to the best of my abilities you know when you when you speak of your idol um your idol mentioning uh, uh, his students to always imagine it's it's so apt because right now i think our imagination is what's really going to help us graduate as successful engineers because of our online classes uh for example we have so many subjects uh, we don't we don't have we have a lack of equipment we don't have equipment at home we don't have uh, laboratories at home so right. i think imagination plays a very vital role when you are disconnected with uh, professors so uh, we don't really have the experience of sitting in lecture halls anymore we need to sit at home mostly on our bed early in the morning and listen to lectures and we imagine everything like kinematics of machinery mm-hmm. such subjects have so much of uh, Uh, so much of movements going on i think imagination plays a vital role in these in this in these cases so i think your idol was perfectly correct uh, and it's so apt in this case imagination is what's really going to help us graduate as engineers someday exactly and also i want to ask you yes sir go ahead go ahead exactly exactly now uh, you brought out the topic of laboratory equipment you know i was taking this session on dynamics of machine once i took this course only once and uh, there are these laboratories with some reciprocating engines and then there are there is this experiment to be done on 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 this vibrating equipment i mean at least 5 to 6 per experiments used to be performed so what i did i took my laptop with me opened microsoft excel right so in an experiment you generally need to have create a some some kind of tables and then at the final column you write the write the main answer right and then you once you have done the experiment n number of times you take the average value and uh, you claim that sir this is the value uh, this is the rpm that i have got and or this is the moment of inertia which i have obtained so i took the students to a lab and i handed over my laptop to one student and i told him yes this is sort of a column that i have made okay n number of table that i have made you just input the values i am doing the experiment in front of you so just input the values and once you input the values all the answer appeared automatically because i had set the formula in excel also i mean as a teacher it's very very important to innovate the students got some new kind of experience they told me so uh, how is this possible how can you just input the values and get the answer automatically in excel but that's possible this is something that you can accomplish people don't even know the abilities that this microsoft excel has to offer people don't know what abilities this microsoft powerpoint has to offer look how much i have accomplished just just by learning and implementing learning and implementing microsoft powerpoint all the diagrams that i have made on engineering drawing it's all a result of microsoft powerpoint it's a wonderful oh. software it's a wonderful software that's great Even sir i actually mechanics know that <laughs> even engineering mechanics videos all of them have been made in ms powerpoint let me tell you very frankly i mean the software has a lot of capabilities people don't know about it or people don't want to know about it 
okay you have to work you have to hustle even as a teacher everybody on this planet has to hustle if you if you want to or if you want to reach the top of the hierarchy it's very important right sir right sir so, sir i also want to ask you one more question and i think uh, this question arises in many of our minds when you completed your engineering degree yeah. uh, w- what was that that told you that you need to become a teacher and what really uh, defines you as a teacher from an engineer or would you really still consider yourself an engineer or a teacher uh, it's it's a very thin line separating the two i believe and you have to make that decision when you were at the crossroads when you graduated from your college so you told me that you had a job you got a job as a professor yeah. at a college so uh, you you are you're a trained engineer but you became a teacher so what is the thin line that separates the two look so shind i have to be very honest with you uh when i graduated in the year 2009 okay there was absolute recession as far as manufacturing sector or the steel sector is concerned aluminum sector is concerned and it's not that i have not tried i was very much inclined towards working in an industry especially the steel sector but i had sent my resumes to a lot of places i physically went there i got i didn't got any response in written to be very honest i had to do something my graduation was over i wanted to make sure that i am someone who can provide help to my family financially okay we were going through this phase where money was very very important okay my father let's say let me be very honest he was sort of okay he has seen his ups and downs in life but i wanted to make sure at that as a son at that i can ensure financial stability to but my family so i had to do something i mean it was an 8000 rupee job can you believe it i back in the year 2009 i was i had to do something so i worked worked even for 8000 rupees that is the very sad state of teachers in our country teachers are recruited let me tell you let me make this statement i don't know whether people are going to like it or not teachers in our country are recruited on the basis of their phd's and post doctorates and not on the basis of their teaching or demonstrating skills unfortunately that is a very sad sad state of affairs okay and uh, yes this is exactly what i think about it uh, please add on sir uh, that's uh, in a way uh, i'm not really sure how i'm not really that experienced i'm still new to engineering and i've been ex- exposed to very less engineering to be honest because of the pandemic but uh, i can agree with the uh, uh, one thing one thing you said you know sometimes when uh, a lot of lot of things just don't just don't go away it has happened to me many times but what things what i believe is things just uh, they all work out fine in fact you're a grand success today probably because your dream job didn't work out but you are meant for something else you are meant to educate children uh, via youtube and you you have been really impactful in the engineering world of india and exactly. i think things just work out at the end of the day exactly. we just have to wait sometimes we just don't understand why we fail but we eventually get to know why we failed over a due course of time i i never wanted to enter this profession of teaching socian let me tell you very frankly <laughs> this is this is this was always my plan b or plan c let's say but sometimes your plan c works out very well and man uh, the first year of teaching my of my teaching career uh, i mean just by watching students as faces in the classes they were very happy to learn from me and i can see them solve all those numericals understand all the theory behind it while i was doing some experiments in a laboratory i found they were very interested when i was teaching and yes this was a push and uh, my subconscious mind i really adhered to it okay and i mean uh, you you think of something else something else happens in your life and this is part and parcel you have absolutely no hold on the most important thing is to put in 100% effort and that's exactly what i have been doing yeah right and uh, since you are uh, really uh, you have really uh, close uh, connection with your students uh, 
how how much of an impact do you think uh not just your resources but of course there are many many youtube channels like uh, uh nptel like you mentioned how yeah. impactful do you think such channels have been during the pandemic because if you ask me it has been incredibly impactful uh you know for example i am actually i stay in kuwait and mm. my lectures begin at 8 o'clock that means 5:30 over here two and a half hours difference so i get up at 5 o'clock to attend the lectures and that is fine but at, at the end of the day i i also watch your videos and and it it really uh, makes all the concepts concrete and during this pandemic i think uh, all kinds of uh, online education resources have been really helpful so how impactful exactly. has it been to your students i'm pretty sure you're having uh, interactions with students uh, where you reside so. exactly students have always been very appreciative because i've put the entire content of mechanics as well as drawing on my youtube channel okay the playlist is there there are as many as 175 videos in drawing and as many as 100 videos in engineering mechanics i have tried to make sure that all the a level problems are there i mean from right from the simple ones to difficult ones even when i finished drawing and mechanics i thought of quitting youtube i thought i mean that was enough then students were telling me sir since you belong from the mechanical engineering background please take more subjects then i thought about making videos on uh, mechanics of solids and one by mm. one one by one very slowly i have been able to upload almost 70% of this subject then i started off with kinematics of machines also uh, velocity analysis relative velocity approach and uh, the acceleration analysis i center method all of these things coriolis component all of these things i have uploaded but you know shushant i don't know whether you guys have observed it or not i mean i take my time i want to make sure that i deliver the best quality video and that's why i take my time there is a lot of hard work people don't even realize there is a lot and lot of hard work no i completely agree with you that's why i describe your lectures as performances because it's it's truly a performance it's not just a lecture it's it's a performance and also you know with the way things are progressing n- not just with your channel but with uh, edutech in general is progressing at such a fast pace i mean a person uh, maybe a uh, anyone literally anyone can just access the internet and become an engineer learn all the jargon uh, the theoretical knowledge that uh, need to be obtained via your channel or or any other channel for that matter so uh, i think the uh, i think the reason why we go to uh, college is uh, one to to learn engineering to experience uh, Uh, research facilities nit warangal has uh, really uh, stellar research facilities opportunities uh, speak to professors and uh, uh, involve yourself with job markets but what do you think is the future of online learning what do you think is next for the students because right now we are watching videos and there are many uh, edutech uh, startups what do you think is going to come next say 15 years down the lane how different is education going to be how different is a uh, engineering course is going to be with all of this internet and college and research facilities how is okay. it going to change how is it going to transform okay let's let's have this dialogue okay. sushant um so uh you in most of the engineering colleges okay that i've been to that i've been a part of and in most of the university indian universities or central universities or straight universities i don't know about the nits and iits i think you can shed light on that but the i mean the bad thing is that most of the grades that students make okay at the end of any semester are because of their performance in theory subjects theory subjects i mean let's say uh, out of 80 marks you are making 60 marks and then there is this teacher assessment let's say of 20 marks and then there is laboratory of a particular subject a lot of weightage is based on the test that you write the final exams right this has to be reduced let me tell you otherwise it is going to be otherwise our country is going to produce some rattu totas and uh, chatur ramalingams right who have got who have got uh, very good theory uh, marks because they are able to write it write it up properly you need to make sure that the engineer who is passing out from a particular university let's say he has to be very skillful skillful with the practical world i mean theoretical knowledge is good and 
it's it's very ap- appreciative that you are able to communicate all of that knowledge in a piece of paper but now that is not needed from you once you are p- passed out and this is a problem which most of the engineers are facing these days and it is because of the way marks are being assigned to students i mean i have heard teachers say and this is i have heard and this is something that students have also communicated to me that sir our teacher says that this question appeared in the year 2018 and that's why it is very important right and this is exactly what teachers do back in class 11th and 12th and these are very important questions these are very 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 important questions uh, try to solve them that, that is not engineering let me tell you that is rubbish absolutely rubbish and i don't subscribe to this point of view right as an engineer you have to be very practical as an engineer you have to be very skillful if you go to the workshop you should know how to do carpentry you should know how to do fitting if you go to an internal combustion engine uh, laboratory i mean I, i've seen students finding it difficult to start the engine start a diesel engine start a petrol engine forget about taking readings from it i mean this if this is the way that engineering students i mean will be learning in their four years it is going to become very difficult and i'm sorry to say this we won't be able to produce quality engineers like countries like germany do like countries like france do right if you want to make your mark this this sort of writing and weightage oral examination nobody is talking about oral examinations have a one on one interaction i mean the faculty student ratio in iits and nits is quite good have a one on one interaction why not why not test him test him why not people in private colleges and private universities i have seen students not giving answers in vivas and yet they are given passing marks okay and i think these things really take away the quality quotient from most of the indian engineers right so people who will be exposed to a better experiments a better practical skills they are going to eventually do good in their life i mean they have because they have put in the efforts just learning the text from the books that is not enough and yes a lot of content a lot i shouldn't say a lot i think all the content is available on the internet right now regarding each and every subject i'm doing some i have done a lot of things in engineering drawing some other people have done a lot of things they have uploaded a lot of content and on other subjects i mean i just recently i've seen that there is a entire playlist of uh, operations research operations research is something that you guys also will be studying in i guess in your final years it's a very important subject especially for industrial engineering and back when i did my mtech in cat cam robotics i also studied from professor srinivasan i don't know whether you know this or not but professor Uh, Shri Nivasan, right now he is deputed in ID Chennai, ID Madras, in you know, Chennai. Okay, so uh, I mean his lectures are absolutely fantastic. I mean he is so humble, and uh, I don't know how he is able to I mean deliver with so flawlessness. Absolutely, I loved it. So uh, watching lectures online has even impacted me, and I wanted to be like him. Just I like I told you with some other professor also. Okay, you always try to better yourself, better your skills, right? Okay. So uh, uh, regarding the uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, you know the uh, way uh, engineering students are uh, uh, evaluated, uh, based on my past experience, I think it's uh, it's more of the uh, uh, of course it's all theoretical right now. I think that's how our curriculum has. Uh, that's how it's 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 built i think it's been it's changing now for example in our third year and fourth year we are given an option to uh, pursue a project of our own and will be graded uh, on the project uh, in the fourth year so these are new initiatives that uh, i believe nits and the iits are coming up with for example even we have a subject it's called uh, epics so you can come up with a project you can form a team of uh, uh, a number less than 6 you can uh, pursue the research work and uh, you'll be graded and i think it's four credit subject and uh, even uh, my peers my friends all of them are uh, pursuing uh, internships research internships at uh, iits or the nits mm-hmm. and uh, it's 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 in i i'm i'm actually i filed a patent uh, uh, two weeks back uh, with the really supportive uh, professors from my college that so is amazing. when it comes to research 
Thank you so much. When it comes to research work, I think the IITs and the NITs are incredibly supportive. If the student shows an interest in uh, uh, pursuing a, res- a research work uh, project, they mm-hmm. are supportive. They provide you with the labs. But the curriculum hasn't changed, like you said. The curriculum needs to change. But when it comes to research work, my personal experience, my professor is just amazing. He is incredibly supportive. And uh, that is something I noticed in, in NIT. But at the same time, when I, to, when I wrote my book, when I wrote my uh, 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 book, I, I, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really that, uh, it wasn't the ideal place to uh, launch and publish a book, my engineering college. But when it came to my research work, it was, it was an incredible place. So uh, I completely agree with you when you tell me that uh, I think practical knowledge has to be taken even more seriously because uh, even I've noticed that, uh, for example, I, I'm, my project is based on heat transfer and I'm trying to study Peltier devices. So I had to uh, pursue this knowledge by my own because it wasn't really taught or uh, supported in my second year. I have to wait for my third year to learn that subject. Uh, but my professor, again, he, he helped me out. Uh, so these are, uh, these are little things I've noticed in my very brief experience at NIT. I'm not really sure how it works in the IITs, but when it comes to research work, I think these these colleges are uh, the place to be. Uh, but again, you're quite lucky. Very, you're yeah, quite yeah. lucky, Sushant, to be part of one of the top notches, top notch NITs in India. I mean, people true, true. people consider NIT Varangal even above some of the IITs recently opened IITs, right? So, uh, right. Okay, so you should be very proud of it and make the most out of it make the most out of it and uh, uh, please let me know since when uh, are you guys involved in online classes since when how long has I it think been it, uh, yeah it uh, began uh, during our uh, yes we had online semester our third semester was online so our third and okay. fourth semester was one, online yes and because of the ongoing pandemic i think our fifth mm. semester is also going to be completely online so no physical classes yet Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's physical and classes. Interesting. Are the I mean, I, I mean, when you sit with your friends, there is companionship. You share food, and there is a lot of stuff. Other activity also. I mean, you boys know very well uh, that you can do right. when you guys get along. Okay, sports activities. Staying in a hostel is a different, different sort of entertainment altogether. Using different personalities. Uh, it's it, meeting so many people from different parts of india it's 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 a it's a blessing you know i mean there are some right. dip, you can share your cultures it's 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 amazing it's amazing right and uh, also sir i want to ask you one more thing yeah with all of this uh, online uh, education available how do you think it's going to impact the job market for example uh, we all like to pursue courses on youtube and on coursera and edx and all of that to give us uh, you know additional credentials Mm. So, how is all of this going to impact uh, the future job prospects? How is, is is it? Do you really think it's going to help us getting a better job, or do you think it's mm. going to actually slow the entire process down and dilute the entire idea of studying mm. in an engineering college with online resources also available? So, how do you think the job market is going to change in the future with all of this? Look, um, I think if you, I think studying until you are in class tenth or twelfth. I think that is sufficient. If you can make a decision that you want to get into academics, that you, as soon as you can make that decision, if you want to get into academics, enroll in a college. Okay. If you want to make sure that you want to get into IITs or NITs, prepare for the examination, the JWE examination in, in India. You have to make that decision at a at a very young age. Okay. But what happens? People after doing their engineering, they sort of stumble. Some people find it difficult to get a job. Okay. Uh, they have to hustle a lot right now the students have a kind of mindset that as soon as they graduate they want a job immediately all of them are looking for jobs right okay i have also no problems do a job no problem but at the end of the day you have to you should be and you have to be you have to have guts to create your own business at the end of the day okay after i mean job i have been in a job for almost as many as 10 years and now that i'm absolutely free from any foundation, I've been able to work to the best of my abilities. So please have that in mind. A lot of people keep working for their entire careers 
without even realizing that they had the potential yes they had the potential to do some kind of business or vyapar okay so they have to realize this thing and a lot of things are already changing as far as online courses are concerned people are going for certifications and they are with a bit of hustling there has to be hustling always okay and it's quite good yes the one who hustles the most well he will land into something good certification courses are the future let me tell you this is exactly what i think nobody thought about online classes okay this is this is something that you can i can provide an analogy with nobody thought of lifts but once you have a lift in a building people hesitate to climb these stairs it's not that the stairs have been completely replaced by lifts in the same fashion online classes are here to stay okay the physical classes will always be there and people will prefer it no problem but online classes are the future right and both of them will be working simultaneously okay so uh, that's a th- exactly how thing works and one more thing i mean if very if you can realize your potential at a very earlier stage if you can ch- work out what your inclinations are if you can work out whether you want to go into academics whether you want to go into sports well you will be in a better position you will find yourself successful if i may call it at a early early stage maybe in your early 30s maybe in your late 30s whatever it might be okay i still don't my consider myself to be successful you should never consider yourself successful you just have to give your best because there are going to be ups and downs life is like a sinusoidal curve okay i think that's the quote for us quote for the day you never consider yourself successful just give it your best life is a sinusoidal curve exactly. it's a perfect way to end this podcast i believe sir a really truly words of wisdom and i really appreciate you sparing the time uh to do this it's truly inspiring thank you very much sir it's a true honor to speak to you pleasure pleasure is mine sushant thank you take care